alone and you think I wouldn't see you. <laughs> Laura B is with us today. <laughs> Very special puppy in visit. Reverend John, I invite you now to the podium in this consciousness of love for your message. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Anne. And to those watching us on the World Wide Web, if you feel the energy this morning, the love and the warmth, it's radiating right here from the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. It's just such a beautiful morning. And the Bougainvilleas are in full bloom, and the Ixoras are a riot of color, and I believe the Pui's are about to burst into yellow glory because they've been shedding their leaves right in my front garden and into my house, but I bless them because it, it's the forerunner of such beauty. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our spiritual community. You know, I once read a story about the 19th century American philosopher and essayist Ralph Waldo Emerson, who, according to the, um, the story, the Concord sage, as he was known, and a young boy, were faced with the difficult problem of getting a stubborn calf into a barn. Now, if you've ever had a, an experience of trying to get a stubborn animal to do something it doesn't want, you will appreciate the story. So with a rope fastened around the animal's neck, the young boy tugged and tugged. And Emerson put his shoulder to the animal's rump and pushed and pushed and pushed. But the animal maintained the status quo. Me nah move. I shall not be moved, I think we sing sometimes. Anyway, during all the pushing and pulling, an Irish maid servant came out on a neighboring um, porch and watching the spectacle, laughed loud and long. I think as sometimes all ladies do laugh at us gentlemen when we are pushing and pulling and not getting anywhere. And they say, if only knew the secret. Well, the maid servant knew the secret. She sauntered over to Emerson and the young boy. She dipped her finger in a pail of milk and stuck it in the calf's mouth. And he followed her like a lamb into the barn. <laughs> My encouragement this morning is titled, Blessed Be the Doers, because when Emerson had that experience, he walked into the house wiping the perspiration from his face and thinking deeply. And then he sat down at his desk and wrote in his journal, I love people who can do things. There's also a story in Genesis about a woman who could do things. She went, as the women were wont in those days, to the well to draw water. This is in Genesis, I uh, forget the chapter. Anyway, it's early Genesis. And an older man asked her for a drink. Without hesitation, she lowers the earthen jar from her shoulders and gives the thirsty stranger a drink. And then she figures that his camels must also be in need of water. So she sets about the arduous task of watering the camels. You know how big a camel is? Now, she figures that his camels need water and she offers to water them. Little did she realize how this act of generosity would change her life and the lives of so many other people. The woman was Rebecca. She didn't know that the man that she had served was chief servant of Abraham, or that he had been sent to bring a bride for Abraham's son, Isaac. According to the story, just before meeting Rebekah at the well, the servant stood at the well and prayed. And this is in Genesis 24. I knew I made a note somewhere. Verses 12 to 15. And his prayer contained this exhortation. Let it be that the woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink, let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. End of that quote. Now the servant must have wondered how many young women he would have to ask for a drink before any of them even complied, let alone offering to water his camels. Now, you know, friends, watering a camel is not like giving a dog a, a bowl of water, you know. They are large. And an adult camel that's thirsty can drink 20 gallons of water. So let's do the math. T 10 camels at 20 gallons each equals 200 gallons. 
200 gallons drawn with a five gallon jar equals 40 trips from the well. 40 trips to a conserv at a conservative maybe three minutes each equals two hours of the lady's time. So what seemed like a simple offer of kindness would well have taken Rebecca at least two hours to fulfill. You know, friends, I'm here a lot of time at all hours of the day and night. And sometimes I wonder if we stop to think about and appreciate the time and effort, not to mention the expense, that the loving souls who give up their sacred service to this temple so lavishly and so willingly just, just pour out on our spiritual community. We come and we enjoy our service, but how often do we think what it takes to, to make this happen? Take the apparently simple business of Sunday morning refreshments, or setting out 150 to 200 chairs, or collating the order of service, or arranging the flowers, or preparing the musical accompaniment, or even just checking that the restrooms are adequately stocked with amenities. Like Rebecca, the loving souls who volunteer walk the extra mile. They go beyond what has been asked of them. And there's an important lesson to be learned from this Rebecca story, and it is this. I never thought of this until I was writing this encouragement. You really can't walk the second mile until you have walked the first. You really can't walk the second mile until you have walked the first. A lot of people will tell you, I want to walk the extra mile. You know, when I win the lotter, I'm going to give a large contribution to the temple, you know, I have in mind 20 million. And I said to myself, that's lovely. What about um, where you are right now, $2,000? Would I really help we, you know, put two stick of flowers in the vases and, you know, keep the temple wonderful? So um, I see somebody waving at me. This is lovely, Aunt Termi. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Aunt Termi walking the extra mile. Let's give her a hand. talking about Rebecca who met Aaron at the well and not only gave him a drink of water but offered to water his 10 camels 20 gallons each 200 gallons of water going the extra mile and the five of you sitting before us this morning have done that you have watered our camels which brings me to your assignment <laughs> Carrie you don't know anybody with a camel <laughs> Oh dear, I'm tempted to say, okay, yes. Here's your assignment, your mission, should you decide to undertake it this week, is today after lunch, spend a few moments and just jot down the names of those people who have walked the extra mile for you. Just jot down their names in your journal. And this week, sometime during the week, email, WhatsApp, whatever platform you use, phone, just call, just contact them and say, thank you. You might even have some fun and say, I've called to thank you for watering my camels. And they're going to say, what? <laughs> and then you can tell them the story of Rebecca and say, thank you for watering my camels. You've walked the extra mile for me. Is that a, is that a nice assignment? Yeah. That's one, that's one assignment. Yeah. <laughs> Sandy says, don't clap yet because there's another one coming. No, the other assignment is to make a note in your diaries of our summit, which is going to be on May 15 in the evening here at the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. 
and on May 16th, which is a Saturday, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at uh, Eden Gardens. This summit, as the name implies, is going to be a mountain peak experience in which we look at how we can all be involved in that extra mile walking to make this center for spiritual living known throughout our land and abroad as a place where people learn to thrive and people find the truth of their, their divinity. It's, it's what we're here about and we want, we, we think this that we have is such a wonderful blessing. It's so transformative that we really want everybody to get it. But we don't want to hold them down and, and, and gag them with it. We want them to get it because they see something in us which makes them think, wow, these people, these people know something. I, or I'd like to, to know what it is that makes them tick. So the summit is on May 15th and 16th, and it is a must experience for all of us. And that brings me to uh, another story I wanted to share with you. I, I, you know, my beloved um, Susan Goff used to tell Nazarudin stories all the time, um, which we loved. And I found a Nazarudin story, which I, I have um, adapted and made it into an Anansi story because I'm going to be sharing it with my, with my participants in the Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life program in the prisons. You want to hear my Anansi story? Yes. yes so one, one time, long, long time, Anansi was looking out in the street outside his house very diligently in the dust and the rubble of the street. And Burr Tiger, his neighbor, with whom he did not have a good relationship, was watching him in bewilderment. What could Bear and Nancy be looking for? So after a long while, unable to, to maintain his, his curiosity, he said, Bear and Nancy, what are you looking for so long in the street? And Nancy said, Ah, Brett Tiger, my house key. Alas, my house key. And so Brett Tiger, in a fit of neighborly generosity, said, I'll go and help you. And so he joined Anansi, and they both together searched in the street outside Anansi's house and Bert Tiger's house for a long time. And after a long while, Bert Tiger straightened up and holding his aching back said, Oh, boy, Bert Anansi, you, you don't have any idea where exactly I dropped the key. And Anansi said, Yes, I dropped it in the house. <laughs> so why? Are we searching in the street when you lost your key in the house? Brer Tiger roared. And Brer Nancy said, Ah, Brer, Brer uh, Tiger, it's dark inside the house. And there is more light outside here. <laughs> and my friends, you know, so often we are looking outside outside of ourselves, outside of where we think it's lighter, across the fence in other people's business, for the key, the key to our divinity, the key to our spirituality, the key to our peace, the key to our understanding of our walk with the divine. And all the while, it was inside in the dark recesses of the temple of our hearts. That's where the key is, my friends. And that's where we have to look if we want to access it. And so this morning, as we celebrate these beautiful pillars of the temple, I want you just to remember that they didn't look outside. They came here and they learned to look within at the feet of our beautiful Dr. Elma Lumsden. And if you are still looking, I want to invite you to come to a Thursday class. Thursday morning at between 11 and 1, or Thursday evening between 7 and 9. In both those classes, we, we explore how one can have a deeper walk and how we can access that key which everybody was given at the moment they were created by the creator of all good at all times. So I was to just thank you for being here and for your, your consciousness and for being the light. And just say to you, keep on keeping on. The light is within you. Can we say, say, the light of God is within me? Can we say that? The light of God is within me. To your friend, your neighbor say, the light of God is within you. Namaste. The light of God is within you.
within you. Namaste. The light of God is within you. Namaste. What is the assignment? People who have walked the extra mile for you and contact them this week and thank them for watering your, your camels. My friends, my beautiful family, thank you for watering my camels. Namaste.